गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस क्लास टूडे वी विल लर्न हाउ टू यूज स्टीम टेबल्स एंड मोलियर डायग्राम इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड आउट द वेरियस प्रॉपर्टी वैल्यूज ऑफ स्टीम एट डिफरेंट कंडीशन इन द लास्ट टू क्लासेस आई टोल्ड यू अबाउट बाइंग दिस बुक स्टीम टेबल्स स्टीम टेबल्स ओके सो आई होप यू हैव इट विथ यू and in the steam table book and i asked you to give uh, bring from si units only in the last page you will find a chart okay so that it is chart if you spread it out it will take this form so this is the molier diagram this molier diagram also you will find in the in the back page of the steam table uh, book okay so now how these are helpful this is a tool by the help of which you can find out the properties or various properties of steam at a particular condition suppose you know that the steam is at 20 bar and 300 degree centigrade so you are now given two information or information about the values of two of its properties one is pressure 20 bar and one is temperature 300 degree centigrade so out of the eight thermodynamic properties if you recall i have been telling you since the first class that out of the eight thermodynamic properties if you know the values of any two then the remaining six values can be obtained in thermodynamics by the use of correlations by the use of equations by the use of charts tables etc so molier chart is a chart like that but it is specifically for steam and water all right now if you remember in the last class we discussed about what are the information that the steam tables give us okay steam tables is and what are the what are the information that in different columns on the steam table in the steam table you will find in every table you will find a pressure column then a saturation temperature column then vf vg hf hg hfg sf sg etc that means for every pressure you have a temperature at which boiling starts for every temperature to start boiling the uh, liquid must be maintained at a particular pressure those pressure and temperature values are called saturation pressure and saturation temperature respectively so for one atmospheric pressure or 1.013 bar the saturation temperature is 100 degree centigrade similarly for 5 bar the saturation temperature is 151 degree centigrade for 220 221.2 bar which is the critical pressure the saturation temperature is 374 degree centigrade but it is not humanly possible to memorize to remember all the values means at at this pressure what should be the temperature of phase change at this pressure what should be the temperature of phase change it is not humanly possible it is not required also therefore you have a steam tables which give us all these data so in the steam table you have the pressure column temperature column hf that is hf is enthalpy at the fluid end or in the liquid side and hg is the enthalpy at the saturated paper line so if you draw the hs diagram hs diagram for steam we have already explained this one we have already known this one so this is the dome this is the critical point and this is the saturated vapor line this is the saturated liquid line and the constant pressure lines are like this the constant pressure lines are like this you don't get a flat in the constant pressure line just like you get it in the th diagram in the th diagram the line will come like this then there will be flat and then again it will go like this <coughs> the step or the flat comes because during phase change temperature remains constant but that doesn't happen in case of hs diagram during phase change the h does not remain constant rather h increases so if h here the value is hf here the value is hg then hg is greater than hf by an amount equal to hg minus hf which is denoted as hfg and hfg is nothing but your latent heat of vaporization similarly at this pressure if you go to a higher pressure this is hg this is hf the difference is hfg at that pressure 
If you go here, this is HG, this is HF. If you if you go like this, then a point comes where the at critical point the HG and HF they become the same point, a same enthalpy value, and the HFG value vanishes, it becomes zero. That means there is no latent heat of vaporization at critical point. That means at critical point you don't require any amount of heat to transform liquid into vapor. So the liquid upon heating immediately passes into vapor. Similarly, the vapor on cooling immediately gets condensed to liquid at that high pressure and temperature here. here. Okay. Now, if so steam table gives the value on this line and on this line. But steam table doesn't give you the property values beyond this point. And what is this point? This point is the superheated, superheated vapor. In the superheated vapor zone, the steam tables do not give you the property value. Steam tables are confined to the dome along with the saturated lines. Okay. So you get the value of Hg, you get the value of Sg, you get the value of Vg, Vf, Hf, etc. But this F and G, the properties with this F and G are only on the saturated line. And the in between the transition zone also, steam table will, from the using steam table, you can get the property values. But what about the superheated zone? For the superheated zone, therefore, you have this Molier chart where this if you draw a line here if the y-axis is taken here then because we want to show the superheated region more prominently so if in the HS diagram if I take the H here and S here in this direction enthalpy entropy then this line is the saturated vapor line. So in the that that HS diagram is nothing but molecular diagram is nothing but your HS diagram. So HS diagram, but where the superheated region is more prominently shown. Now you see this line is actually this line is this one, this one, this one. You can see a thick line here. If you have the steam table, then spread it and see there is a thick line here. This line is this is H, this is S. And this line is a saturated vapor line. See saturated vapor line. And this region is the transition region. And this region is the superheated vapor region. Now suppose you want. And in this superheated region you have constant temperature lines. Here it is written constant temperature. These are constant pressure lines. Okay. And they meet. They all come here. Beyond this. Saturation curve, the constant temperature line and constant pressure lines, they merge into one line because you know in TH diagram, you know in TH diagram, this is a constant pressure line and this is a constant temperature line. So within the dome, the constant temperature and constant pressure lines, they merge into one line. Okay. Because during phase change, the pressure remains constant, the temperature remains constant. So here, if this is the temperature line, it comes like this and then goes like this. The pressure lines are like this. Okay. The pressure lines are like this. Like this. So, what I am trying to tell you is that if you are having a Molier diagram and you know the values of two of its properties, that means suppose you know the steam pressure is 20 bar and temperature is 200 degree centigrade. Okay, so what you can do, 20 bar line, these are the constant pressure lines. So if you if you look at these lines, if there is a 20 bar, this is 20 bar line. Now 20 bar line and then there are temperature lines, 300 degree, 350, 250, 200. So 220. So you can keep one of your fingers here, 200 degree centigrade line and then 20 bar line, 20 bar line, 20 bar line. Wherever they intersect, wherever they intersect, that point is located. And once you locate this point, put a pencil mark here. And this, what is the y scale? What is the, what is there in the y axis? The y in the y axis you have your enthalpy, and in the x axis you have your specific entropy. 
So you read this scale and you can get 3100 kilojoules per kg. So once you locate the point in the Y scale, you can read it and that will be giving you, that will be your enthalpy values. Similarly, in the X scale, you have your entropy. So if you want to know specific entropy kilojoules per kg K, you will get here. Kilojoules per kg K, you will get here. All right. <coughs> and in the vapor dome, on the saturation curve, if you can find out the value, enthalpy value, but that enthalpy value is also same as which one? Is also same as Hg. So at 20 bar, if you if you want what is Hg, then you can see steam table, you can also see this one. Bring the 20 bar pressure line, wherever it intersects, that corresponding enthalpy will give you Hg value. The HF value, you cannot know from this molar chart because HF value comes here only in this side and this side is not shown in the molar chart. So HF value you will get, HF is for what? HF is not for superheated vapor, HF is not for the transition zone, HF is for the saturated liquid line. So that, that value you will be obtaining only from the steam table. Suppose you want what is the HF value at 15 bar. So go to the steam table, not the molar diagram, go to the steam table and open the pressure based table then at 15 bar you see what is the value of HF. Okay. So, steam tables gives you all the values within the saturated vapor line, saturated liquid line and in between. But Molier diagram gives you the values of steam at a region, in an extended region or in the superheated region because and Molier diagram is more valuable and more useful because your power plants what is the driving prime mover? Well, the prime mover is what is the working material? Working material is steam and that is high pressure, high temperature steam. That means superheated steam. So in the power plant, we need to know what are the property values at the entry to the turbine, at exit to the turbine, at exit to the boiler, etc. So that, that those are all in superheated region. So this molar diagram becomes more useful than the steam tables in case of power plant problems. But if you are doing on the liquid side or in the transition zone, like if you are solving condenser problem, then for condenser problem, this steam table is more convenient and more useful. So these are the few things that we need to know about Molier diagram, but it requires a practice. So I will tell you few things and you, you see how we can practice it and get the values. Okay. Now at any pressure temperature value, you have to locate the point first and then read the enthalpy values. Suppose I will say 25 bar pressure and 250 degree centigrade. Okay. What is the enthalpy? What is enthalpy? So 25 bar pressure. So read the value. You can, you, you, I think you, you will not be able to see here, but it starts from 1000 bar, 800, 600, like that, 100, 80, 70, 25. Yes, this is 25 bar. So 25 bar, this whole line is 25 bar. Then 250 degree centigrade is this line, 250 degree centigrade. So this line and this line, they intersect at a point. So that point is the point of intersection or that point represents a condition of steam where the pressure is 25 bar and temperature is 250 degree centigrade. So this point, fix this point. At this point, you read the enthalpy value. So H value you will get from here. S value you will get from here. And from so H value, S value you can get. P value and uh, T value are given to you. So four values you got. Then you also get here constant volume lines. So that point you see find out which constant volume lines is there on which this point lies. So that value will be the volume, constant volume, constant specific volume, meter cube per kg. So out of the eight properties, you can come to know that uh, pressure, temperature, two values were known to you. Now the remaining six, so you get the H value from here, S value from here, do ho gaya, constant volume, uh, specific uh, volume you will get, teen ho gaya, then H minus T S. Is your Gibbs function, Gibbs function ho gaya, char ho gaya. 
और एक है इंटरनल एनर्जी व्हाट इज इंटरनल एनर्जी यू प्लस पी वी इज एच एच इज नोन पी इज नोन वी इज नोन सो यू कैन फाइंड आउट यू देन यू माइनस टी एस इज योर हेलमॉस फंक्शन सो यू कैन फाइंड आउट हेलमॉस फंक्शन सो आउट ऑफ फ्रॉम द पी एंड टी टू वैल्यूज दैट आर गिवेन टू यू यू कैन फाइंड आउट एच यू कैन फाइंड आउट एस यू कैन फाइंड फाइंड आउट वी यू कैन फाइंड आउट यू यू कैन फाइंड आउट एच माइनस टी एस दैट इज गिफ्ट फंक्शन यू कैन फाइंड आउट यू माइनस टी एस दैट इज हेलमॉस फंक्शन सो वंस टू प्रॉपर्टीज आर नोन टू यू बाय द हेल्प ऑफ मोलियर डायग्राम यू कैन फाइंड आउट द रिमेनिंग द वैल्यूज ऑफ द रिमेनिंग सिक्स प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ सुपर हिटेड स्टीम राइट सिमिलरली आई विल गिव यू अनदर एग्जाम्पल से सिक्सटी बार एंड फोर हंड्रेड डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड राइट सिक्सटी बार एंड फोर हंड्रेड डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड सिक्सटी बार लाइन यू सी टू हंड्रेड थ्री हंड्रेड हंड्रेड एटी सेवेंटी सिक्सटी सिक्सटी बार एंड फोर हंड्रेड दिस इज थ्री हंड्रेड फिफ्टी थ्री हंड्रेड टू फोर हंड्रेड सो फोर हंड्रेड डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड लाइन एंड सिक्सटी बार सिक्सटी बार सो दे आर इंटरसेक्टिंग हियर फ्रॉम हियर दिस इज द पॉइंट वेर वेर सिक्सटी बार प्रेशर लाइन एंड फोर हंड्रेड डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड टेम्परेचर लाइन आर इंटरसेक्टिंग सो दिस इज दवर टारगेट पॉइंट सो दिस पॉइंट इज द स्टेट एट विच द स्टीम इज एक्सिस्टिंग नाउ सो करेस्पॉन्डिंग एच वैल्यू इज से थर्टी वन फाइव जीरो थ्री वन फाइव जीरो सो इट इज एच इज थ्री वन फाइव जीरो किलो जो पर के जी दिस इज बाई आई अप्रोक्सीमेशन सो जस्ट रीड फ्रॉम दिस स्केल रीड दिस नीड नॉट बी एक्जैक्टली करेक्ट बट by i approximation suppose <coughs> the point lies between 3100 and 3200 you can take it 3150 or 3160 depending on your i approximation okay so so that will not affect the final result much so it, uh, an approximate value you have to choose then suppose i will say from here the drop a vertical there is an isoentropic process if i say there is an isoentropic process till the pressure is reaches one bar then you can draw a vertical line from there wherever it counts the one bar line isoentropically that point is the second point so for the second point two informations are again given pressure is is one that is one bar and it should be vertically down the second point okay so all these things can be obtained from the molier diagram by a judicious use of this chart along with steam table so steam table gives you the property values at the saturated lines and molier chart gives you the values property values and the superheated region now if i also i have also told you about a term called dryness fraction this hf here the dryness fraction is 0 x is 0 means dryness fraction is 0 here x is 1 here x is 1 and here the enthalpy is hf here the enthalpy is hg suppose at this point here x is 0.6 that means it is 60% dry 60% dry steam means means what dryness fraction is a is a quantity which gives you the extent to which the vaporization has been completed so if x is 0 that means dryness fraction is 0 then the pro, the substance is not at all dry not at all dry means wet w e t wet that means it is liquid so it, this is the case if it is fully dry then this is the case that means it has become complete vapor saturated vapor okay so in between it will take up a value between 0 and 1 so if i say x is 0.6 then 60% dry that means the steam is 60% dry and 40% moisture content it has All right, is it forty percent weight? So at this point, what is the enthalpy? Enthalpy will be H X will be equal to H F plus X into H F G. H F is this value plus X X is zero point six. H F G is this minus this. At this you get from the steam table. If X is equal to one, then H F plus H F G is nothing but your H G when X is equal to one. When X is equal to zero. This is zero, so H X is here. It is H F. When it is one, it is H G. When it is zero, it is H F. So this is how you have to find out the enthalpy values in between the transition state 
provided you know the value of dryness fraction. All right. So this is also important and uh, how to find out the nth value. Once we start solving problem, we will be knowing the use of uh, Molier chart and steam table, particularly in the context of power plant cycles. So this much for today and in the next class we will go to the power plant cycles where we will make direct use of this steam table and molar chart to find out the property values at various location of the power plant circuit. I mean before it goes to the turbine what is its enthalpy, after it comes out of the turbine what is its enthalpy, before condenser what is enthalpy, before pump what is enthalpy, after boiler what is enthalpy. So all these things we will be discussing the, which will give us an idea about the output of the plant, the efficiency of the plant and will give us directions for improving the performance of the plant. Okay, this was for today. Thank you. And once again, I am telling that if you are not having the steam table till now, have it. Study this one and try to uh, locate various points at different pressures and temperature and different dryness fraction. There are constant dryness fraction lines also. I can also say pressure is 20 bar and dryness fraction is 0 0.9. So then also 20 bar pressure line and 0 0.9 dryness fraction. So this is the point. So this is a point not in the superheated region. This is a point in the, in the transition zone. So this enthalpy can be found out by using Molier chart can by using the steam table as well. All right. So all these things will you will develop an idea not by listening to a class but by practicing it yourself. Okay, so practice is essential in particularly in, in the exercise of using molar chart and steam. That's all for today. Thank you.